Let's continue our math adventure. Not only can we have fractions in equations, but we can have fractions in inequalities. So today's lesson, we're taking a look at how do we solve inequalities if we have rational numbers. So if I have this inequality, 7 thirteenths x minus 1 is greater than 1 half. Well, what I want to do is I want to get rid of the, those fractions. So I'm going to clear those fractions. And the way that you do that is you look for the least common multiple of those denominators. Well, I know that 13 and 2 both go into 26. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 26. And by doing that, I'm going to actually clear those fractions out. Because I know 26 divided by 13 is 2, and 2 times 7 is 14x. But I have to do it with this 2. So 26, there's nothing to divide it by. So 26 times 1 is 26. I just cleared those fractions. Now that's greater than 26 divided by 2 is 13. 13 times 1 is 13. Now I'm down to a two-step inequality. This is far easier to solve. So I'm going to start on the side that has my variable. I'm going to use inverse operations. So I'm going to do the inverse of subtraction, which is addition. But whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. And I get 14x is greater than 6 plus 3 is 9. 2 plus 1 is 3, 39. Now I need to get x by itself. I'm going to divide by 14. I'm left with x is greater than. Now, if I started with fractions, I'll usually end with fractions. That's where our rational numbers come in. So I can see that this is an improper fraction, and I know that I can set up a division problem. 14 goes into 39 twice, because that's 28. I'm left with 11. That's my new numerator over my original denominator. So my answer is 2 and 11 fourteenths. So what I'm looking for is I'm going to go and graph that inequality. And I always read it from the side that has the variable. So I, I'm saying all numbers are a solution that are greater than 2 and 11 fourteenths. So remember, when we go to graph it, you use an open circle if it's less than or greater than. And you use a closed circle if it's less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. So I'm going to take my 2 and 11 fourteenths. It's going to be an open circle because it's not equal to it. And I read from the side that of the variable, all numbers that are greater. Well, all the numbers that are greater are going to be on this side. So I use my arrow going that direction for that. Now sometimes I've got to gather some like terms before I actually solve my inequality. So when I take a look at this side, I see I have a set of j's here and a set of j's there. And I've got to add those sets together. And I don't have any number before this j, so I know that that number is a 1. So I have a whole j minus 2 thirds j. So I'm going to pull those two together and I'm left with 1 third j right there. But I still have this plus 8 on this side, and I have 18 on this side. Now, I could start off and I could just subtract that 8 from both sides. And I'm left with 1 third j is less than or equal to 10. And I can use the multiplicative inverse to get rid of this 1 third. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 3 because I know a fraction times its multiplicative inverse, otherwise known as its reciprocal, always equals 1. So I'm left with j. And 10 times 3 is 30. So my solutions are all numbers that are less than or equal to 30. I'm going to take my number line. I'm going to put 30. I'm going to put 29. And I'm going to put 31. It's a closed circle because it's less than or equal to. And I read it from the side of my variable, all numbers that are less than, and I put my arrow in the direction of all numbers less than. So there's no difference in working with inequalities with rational numbers as we did with integers. 
All you need to do is follow the same rules, but sometimes clearing those fractions help us to actually solve it in a little bit of an easier way because most people like working with whole numbers. Always remember, gather any like terms together before you actually solve those inequalities. And remember that you need to graph those inequalities to show the infinite, infinite number of solutions that they have. So good luck on this adventure. I know you'll do well.